السلام علیکم سیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت الله Yes, Sayyidi, forgive me for my ignorance. Uh, I have a question regarding who was the devil or shaitan before Iblis, when Iblis was Azazil? Who was the devil in the world of jinn on the earth? What was that? Who was the devil in the world of jinn on the earth? Before Azazil? Hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> The, the, you have to contact the History Channel. Why would you want to go before shaitan? Who shaitan's bosses are, I don't know. <laughs> but I think we describe the, the reality of uh, the worshipper and that he was a jinn and a one whom rise in his knowledges. And that they say there's not a place in which in one hand span that he hasn't made sujood. From earth to the heavens he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed because the lifespan was extraordinarily long. And as a result of his rising was given knowledges. And as a result of these knowledges he was attracting the angels and that any time the Divinely knowledge signal comes out, all of creation is listening. From Buddhala, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Wal Akhyar, Malaika with jinn and ins. Means that when the heavenly channels open, the souls and those whom the realities are open to their souls, they have to listen to absorb those energies. As a result of those knowledges, the angels were being taught. And Allah wanted to test these angels and he knew the destiny of shaitan. And that shaitan continuously thought that he would be the highest of the ranking of Allah's creation until one day Allah revealed and had veiled the Muhammadan haqqaiq from shaitan. And he revealed that, I'm going to make a form to bring my khalifa and the light of my khalifa. Again not knowing the reality of that light and presented the form of Sayyidina Adam in clay. Before Allah blew of the spirit he saw the clay of Sayyidina Adam As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Um, and entered in, entered from the rear and then entered through the head and through the nostrils and mouth. He said, this is something very fragile, easy for me to penetrate, what type of khalifa is this going to be? Means it was the exhibition of jealousy that began to take place. And the one whom thought he was going to be the khalifa became jealous of Allah already had a destiny written and he didn't have to describe that to shaitan. But the character of jealousy entered and as a result of that test we described before Allah wanted to show the angels before they become contaminated by His knowledge, I'm going to show you through a test who you've been learning from. And as a result Allah brought Sayyidina Adam salam, described that he's been taught all the knowledges because the Muhammadan light entered into Sayyidina Adam salam. And the shaitan was veiled from the Muhammadan reality. And as a result of that light entering into Sayyidina Adam 
and all the knowledges asma kullaha and that we taught him all the knowledges. Who taught him all the knowledges? Allah doesn't reveal himself and that's when Haditha Jabbar comes and Prophet described that, I was a Rasul before Adam was between water and clay. Meaning that if I was there before that Prophet is the one who taught Sayyidina Adam the knowledges. Because I was before that, wasn't veiled, I was the Rasul of Allah means in the ancient world of light Prophet put that light into Sayyidina Adam, taught him the knowledges and then in front of the angels Adam appeared, gave the knowledges and was told by Allah that voice, bow down and the angels went to sujood except shaitan and said, I'm not bowing. And the angels got frightened, they looked up, they saw shaitan is not bowing, they bowed again, that's why we have two sujood. And as a result they stayed in sujood and Allah then had his dialogue with shaitan and cast him out for not submitting and his knowledge was filled with arrogance. And that's the talks that we gave before, not only knowledge is important but the vehicle in which it comes. So if I give you beautifically pure, best purified water on earth but I poison the glass, what happens? You'll be dead. You can't say this water was pure. The glass is what's dangerous, not the knowledge only. If the glass is contaminated, if the glass has bad character, if the glass has, has no adab, no reality in this way but even begins to speak knowledges because now the dajjal is on earth, it will speak from things that people can't imagine but the glass is poisonous that he delivers through. Means then tariqah comes and teaches that example and that's what Allah wanted to teach that, look you learn from a very arrogant devil, you just didn't see it at that time because he veiled whom his destiny was and his real nature was. And that was a big test that those angels then got uh, in trouble from that reality. So it means the tariqah teaching is always not only the knowledge is important but the khuluq and that's why we focus on the khuluq, the character. Not this one has perfect qira'ah, this one is like this, this one like this, it's the character that counts. The character has to be good, the character has to be soft, that is the glass in which you'll be giving people knowledges. They look to your glass and they see your character, softness, correctness, lovingness, all of the good manners that Allah inshaAllah to be pleased with. As a result Allah pours His Divine grace and you drink from it to be blessed. But if the character is bad, doesn't matter what the knowledge is, you are a contaminated bad person. So they said, go to a store in which the manager is bad, you'll see all the employees bad. Because that manager teaches people just to be rude and vulgar and, and uh, not correct. But you go somewhere where the, the manager is good, the people are good because they've been trained with good character. So whatever knowledge you give upon good character is beautific to Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi, is there a reality of Mubeen being repeated seven times in Surah Yaseen? Well, of course there's a reality, seven times and seven holy openings. And that's why these are very important, especially Imam and Mubeen that Allah is giving to us. That the, everything is in, the, in this beatific clear registry and I would imagine it didn't make sense a while ago but now everyone knows that the, the best form of information is to be encrypted in light, right? So any of our techie guys know, any of square-headed mind people say, I don't know what you're talking about. Well then ask the guy next to you who knows a bit about computers that you actually encrypt information now and the most secure encryption is in light, means that everything is recorded in this light. Means Allah has recorded everything on the soul of Prophet 
and locked and encrypted it. And that's when Allah described, Alam al Qur'an khalaq al insan from my Divinely speech that contains because the Qur'an is not created. So Allah has dispensed this power and reality of Qur'an that is completely manifesting on the soul of Prophet and then created the insan, a form in which to carry it upon this earth and in different universes and planets. And then I taught him bayan and the ability to convey my Qur'an. It's not something that the animal kingdom because that requires a heart that's inspired and the heart that connected with the tongue. Because Allah can't inspire the baboon, Allah won't, Allah can do anything He wants but Allah has an inspired baboon to talk to us. So it means the bayan is that Allah describing that, I, I taught this Qur'an, I created insan and then I taught him the ability to talk. The bayan is then going to be from the realities of Qur'an. So this is an immense, immense reality from Allah giving towards creation. That not given to giraffe, not given to, to monkeys at the zoo, not given to hippopotamus, not given to creatures. Means that these are the gifts that Allah wa lakal karamna bani adam, that I have honoured your creation. Why? Because this is a gift from Sayyidina Muhammad and that's in the, the likeness. When Allah created creation in this likeness, what's the likeness? In the likeness of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet's shaykh is the, is the model for all of this creation of Bani Adam And that Allah's Divinely face is the dress of the face of Sayyidina Muhammad and mirrors out that reality through the seven openings and seven realities of the openings of the holy face. We pray that Allah address us and bless us with the immensities of these understandings, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, dear shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jum mubarak to everyone inshaAllah. Jum mubarak Can you please elaborate on what you meant by being physically fit in order to take part in muraqaba process in your recent video? Does this mean if we are undergoing treatment we should avoid doing muraqaba? Thank you. Uh, what was the recent video talking about physical fitness? To have good health inshaAllah and maybe it was a, a cut from a greater, a longer talk about mental health, physical health and spiritual health. That you cannot neglect your physical health and think that you're going to meditate because your body going to have pains and issues that would not allow the soul in its freedom. You cannot have mental health issues because as soon as you meditate you're hallucinating. They're very dangerous, they, they start to… we've had the most difficulty from people whom their mental health is not correct because they start to write all sorts of bizarre emails, bizarre interpretations and that's, that's not tariqah, tariqah doesn't deal with any type of issue like that. And there's no spirituality when the mental health is an issue. So they have to go get their medications, they have to stabilize their physical health, they have to stabilize their mental health and as a result of those two being balanced, the third then is their spiritual health, it's like a tripod. So if you don't have two legs on three, what happens? It's falling in that direction. If you don't have two legs at all, there's absolutely nothing. So it means then that's why it's a holistic system. Body, mind and soul have to be all together. As a result of being one, they can reach the singularity of unlocking their power of their soul. So those whom having lots of physical ailments then what can you do? You can fully meditate, you can try to alleviate some of the difficulties and uh, everyone to their ability. But those whom neglect their own physicality it's going to cause issues and difficulties for their ability to worship and concentrate and continuously have uh, some sort of difficulties. So that's why it's encouraged that all three to be functioning inshaAllah. And people say, I want to you know, get rid of my medication and just meditate, no, 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 absolutely don't do that. You keep with your medication, keep with all of these things and meditation is to be 
extra and on top of it like the icing of the cake. Otherwise these people go out of control and, and uh, you know everything you say they smile at you and think you're saying something the opposite. So that, that's very dangerous in spirituality. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah In terms of spirituality, can you kindly explain the harms of moving into a house where previous occupants had idols and carried out their rituals etc.? Forgive my ignorance. Yeah, you try not to move into places like that. That's why you ask the shaykh for guidance before you move and you, you, you look at somewhere where you're about to buy something and if you see like all sorts of idols and, 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 and creatures and all sorts of things it's kind of a sign not to do that. So yeah, you, that, that, that's kind of a, one of those open issues that if you see those types of things try to buy something else because you don't know what's been planted there, what's been put in under the house, what type of prayers they made. Then you're now having to sort of clean out a very negative space. So, but if you've done that then you put the taweezes, you, you know, play the madads, we have a playlist from the Ayatul Kursi and some other du'as on that uh, playlist, you play that in the house and that you, you do the zikrs on the loudspeaker so that the energy of the zikr comes inshaAllah, burn esfan. You basically go through our whole system that, that you know it's in the meditation book, have the taweezes for the house for the rooms, the windows, for the taweez for the self and those are all ruqya, those are all the, the way that Prophet gave to us and that the, the shaykhs have a sajil and a, and a sign in, in which they'll be known and these are for the armies of Sayyidina Mahdi So that you display these and uh, for whatever days are coming then alhamdulillah and whatever shaykh and whatever sijin they have, then depending upon what type of support and power they have behind them, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the gel's kryptonite, so to speak? The gel's kryptonite is the love of Prophet. So, that, that which they try to take off the earth. Is the, is the kryptonite, right? Because kryptonite was green and uh, that Superman was uh, the false messiah who rises above the earth and asks his father for help and all of these things they talk about of Trinity and Father, Son and, and impossible ghost. Those are all their mechanisms and their understandings and that which made him most fearful was the green stone and because they plan Allah plans better and the greenness of Prophet is the truth of heavens. As a result of the infinite truth of heavens, the power of the heavens, the correctness and mubeen. Why mubeen is such a powerful world? In a world we live in in which everything is unclear, Father, Son and Holy Ghost is three but then they say it means one. This is three but it means one. Well when was three ever one? It was never in any math class I ever took that three is one. Everything is like a deceit. Well we, we do the bunny rabbit, it has eggs but eggs don't come from a bunny but it means this. Huh? And this guy in a red suit was made by Coca-Cola but it means something good. So everything was, was corrupt and crooked. When Allah describes Prophet it's mubeen, he's clear, he's clear and he's truthful. There's nothing in Islam you have to distort and get people to believe it. We don't ever say three is one, three is three. We don't say bunnies have eggs, we don't say that we, we bow down to things but we don't bow down to them. Means that everything, everything is a falsehood and Allah gives to us a hint and these days you'll need to know that the, the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah is clear, His message is clear, the reality is clear and it comes like glasses on every falsehood, they did not go to the moon. 
So you put on the glasses of Islam and say, no, that, that, that is not something. They don't even know what's in the ocean. The maps are not correct. When you look at a map, it's not correct. Mecca is above the equator, not below the equator. In, in the pursuit of humanity, above your belly button is your soul, below your belly button is your material desire. And the earth is a symbol of humans, so it has an equator. Everything below the equator of the earth is all the fitna and bad, bad energies, bad beliefs. Everything above the equator is a peaceful and more tranquil reality. Mecca is above the equator. So it means that this is uh, the abodes of deceit and now more than ever deception entered and the system of dajjal is very hidden. Don't think that dajjal be walking on the earth with a bulging eye, he's veiling himself, something nice and pleasant. Those whom have experience with shaitans and devils and, and see them, they come in a beatific look because they veil their ugliness, they veil their true identity. Just like you don't see the identity of the shaykh, you don't know what his form and his true reality. Does he have wings? Does he look like what you're looking at? We don't understand the, the reality of an insan. So what Prophet gave to us was a reality of dajjal, he's an ugly beast. But the form may come as very pleasing to people. So that this is not based on the world of form otherwise there would be no need for spiritual teaching. Because Allah said they have eyes but they don't see, what does that mean? That you look at this and you say, oh he looks like a good guy, he recites nicely. He's like this, he's like that. But Prophet said, I see the scabs of shaitan on him. So this young boy who was very arrogant going around everywhere in the town at the time of Prophet and everyone was coming to Prophet describing, this young boy he recites like amazing, he prays like amazing and don't want to go into that story, it takes us sideways on a different thing and Prophet passed him said, I see the scabs of shaitan on him. And then he asked the boy, how are you? Good. Said, I have a question, do you, do, you, do you probably right now think like you are the best amongst all those who recite here? And he said, yes, yes, very true, how did you know that? I'm the best one to recite all these things. So, okay, that's all I want to know and passed. And went into the mosque and, and Prophet told the companion, this is a shaitan. Shaitans they veil themselves because you know they appear with who their ugliness is, well everyone will attack them, that doesn't require aql. But what's coming in on this earth requires a heart and that's why Surat al-Kahf is their protection. Why? Because Surat al-Kahf means those who went into their cave and they, they can see through the deceit. You see how little people will… will will actually pass. They can't even see past the salawats yelling, screaming, rah, 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 rah. You think they're going to, to fall for deceit when it comes? Yeah, of course. So those whom don't fall from deceit inshaAllah, those whom they're Ahlul Basira, that they open their heart, they have ishq and love for Prophet and that, that love in their heart and the purity of their character to guide them through the storm that entering upon this earth. But if they're looking through their physical eyes then they got a show ahead of them. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Sayyidi, you had recently spoke about dragons protecting certain servants. Is it possible to see them in dreams and does the color of them matter? Do they have to be bright and vibrant? No, they, they don't have to be bright and vibrant because the assumption is that you would see the correct color. So men's member everybody has their degree, nobody reaches the complete truth and the reality of the truth. Look in front of you right now and see my face and see my image and… but you don't really see me. 
So if you can't see me, how are you going to know what the reality of the dragon, the color of the dragon, is it green, is it purple, is it black, what… means that that which is in front of you, you truly can't see and different people have different understanding and, and different ability to see to again to their level. So the general understanding is, is something different than being very specific, is this color, is that color? It's that everyone to their level Allah open for them an understanding. As soon as they meditate and contemplate many see the dragons in the sky above them and these are for protection. Many may feel the dragon's presence around them, that's for protection. Many may see it in their dreams or be attracted to that because they saw them in fantasy films. So there's an inner attraction to the reality of Sayyidina Malik But the most important is make the connection with the shaykhs. We thought this described before that it, it's an army and if you go into the heavens and start going out of your chain of command and start calling upon this and that, this and that, nothing going to answer because they don't add to confusion to anger Allah. So they give these knowledges so in the event these things open don't be frightened for them. But don't start sitting and start trying to call out of your chain of command things that will, oh why would we do this, Allah's going to be angered with us because now this servant going to be confused and what type of relationship. So the one whom, whom is in control of those is the shaykh and those whom have an authority. As a result of that their connection with the shaykh, connection with the shaykh, that protection will be dispatched from above. Not by people trying to call and connect and to understand with that. So these are just knowledges so in the event they meditate all of a sudden they don't have a heart attack seeing a dragon or something flying above them. So these are the knowledges in which to understand the path but not to make that your path. Illuminate the path but it is not your path. So that's important to understand because you don't break the chain of command. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can we learn the correct manners and adab towards dealing with our shaykh as new murids coming to the tariqah? Well the, the, the best of manners is just listen to the talks. They try to give it to the, the best of the ability through the talks. Listen through the, the talks, through older talks. And just the history of all the teachings is all about manners. Listen to anything to do with Surat Al Kahf, and that's the manners in which Allah gave of uh, how to accompany those whom been taught by the heavens. It's not like the one whom been taught at the, a local center, that's the, the, the imam at a center is not the same as, as somebody who's been trained by Allah no disrespect, but they're not the same, they're not the they're not even looking for that, they teach you based on their knowledge and they don't care if you listened or didn't listen and they go. Then there are orators who are trained to speak and they memorize and as a result they, they, they're orators. But then there are others whom are guides in which Allah put them and their entire life through all sorts of testing, testing, testing at the end then now you are guide because you've been tested through the process. And you've moved through every aspect of this process, we're asking you now to go back and guide people on how you were guided. That's different. So each one has a different thing, an orator doesn't know anything about guidance but just speaks very fluently and they're trained to speak and people find uh, interest on how they speak, very general and it attracts the masses. Then somebody who's a guide may have more difficult understandings for people who can't absorb that reality and it's not made for the masses. So I say, why can't you just like speak on a general subject so you know we can get a hundred thousand views? I said, that's not the subject matter nor is that in the curriculum that is being pushed through our hearts. So those, those subjects are going to be for very specific people whom have a spiritual reality and most likely they have a calling towards what's coming upon this earth as a protection. Those whom are not written under that protection then I would imagine they don't have any interest whatsoever in these teachings. So everything already been written.
in Imam al mubin inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how can a Muslim find female Sufi role models as going to the shaykh is difficult? Nobody has to come to the shaykh, that's why it's all help me at nurmuhammad.com. We're not asking anybody to come to us because we're, we're not very available at all. So coming online and emailing you're going to get a series of emails that have… there's nothing under the sun that somebody hasn't already asked. So you ask regarding your spirituality and everything related to your spirituality. Re regarding your personal hygiene and personal matters that's called the Google Shaykh. So all these fiqh books are abundantly on internet, don't use the shaykh for your fiqh. You don't need it, you know that's, that's like coming to kindergarten stuff for them. Is that if you want to know specifically according to Imam Shafi'i, what do I do about this? Well, Google it. That's like when someone sent us that, oh shaykh please, where, where's the hadith of the salt that you said to put the salt? Are you kidding me? In two seconds you Google hadith of salt, the, there was a, literally maybe a hundred posts from all reference and all footnotes from this Sahih, from this Bukhari, from this hadith. From, you didn't need me to do that or were you expecting like the bellman that I would Google it and send you the link to what I Google? No. So these things that people can do of their personal hygiene, their, their women issues, male issues, fiqr, Islamic law issues, oh mashaAllah internet has everything. And then look under your madhab, so don't just put it in there and get all Wahhabi teachings. You say, under Imam Shafi'i, Imam Hanbali, uh, what is the ruling on this? What's the ruling on, on walking with khufs, Imam Shafi'i? What is the, the ruling of fasting like this with Imam Hanbali? And then you'll get all the rulings and then you got your fiqh. Anything else is, is uh, non-gender. So then you'll email us for non-gender related issues, Shaykh I want to meditate, connect my heart, we send you the email. So it's very simple and it's very universal. Everything else you can Google it, that's not the role of the shaykh to do that because then that would just be me having to Google for somebody to send them links on these Googles and we don't have a staff of you know 10,000 people typing all sorts of personal letters. So that everyone has to understand the system and the role. The role of the shaykh is for insights into spirituality that no one else can answer. And if you find somebody else that can, okay well then that'll be a couple people. But for the issues of spirituality, how do I connect, how do I get to the light, I have this type of energy is attacking me, that doesn't… is not… is gender neutral. So inshaAllah it should be very easy and, and not anything that anyone has to feel a shyness because this is not the issue. Spirituality is gender neutral. Anything of a physical Islamic law, very easy, just Google it please, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa sharaf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa lam shaykhina fi tariqat nashbandiyyat al aliyya. Khasadan ruhi ma'am tariqa gawta khaliqa shah nashband Muhammad wa Isa al Bukhari, Sultan awliya shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al Dal Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Shaykh Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Khaliq al Khujitawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatan Fatima al-Qaza alayhi salam, Sayyidina Imam al-Qazali, Qaddas Allahu siru wa sayra wa saddatina wa siddiqeena al-Fatiha. On Googling, try to Google Imam Shafi'i and Imam Hanafi. These are the, the two from Naqshbandiya, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim under Imam Hanafi and Mawlana Shaykh from Imam Shafi'i. And these are probably the, the, the safest ones you're going to find. The other ones 
have attached themselves to Imam Hanbali and you'll pick up a lot of the Wahhabi Salafi uh, interpretations and, and misguidance of those ulama which they have no connection to them but they've attached themselves to those. So the safest is when you specifically ask for Imam Shafi'i ruling on Witr, Imam Shafi'i ruling on Khuf, Imam Shafi'i ruling on Wudu, Imam Shafi'i ruling on my nails, on my cutting my hair or wearing this or wearing that. Those alhamdulillah should be very easy to find and, and, and people. And if you had a question on that specific ruling then no problem then people can email us regarding those questions inshaAllah. Shaw bin Niyata Khatmi Khawjikan. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.